All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another round of Coffee and Questions. What's today's topic? Let's talk about sharpening chainsaw blades. And I can remember when I first started doing this, I used just a file and I would try to file the teeth. Now you can do that, but there's a learning curve to doing it and it'll take a dull blade and make it sharper again. Um, and you can definitely use it and you have to learn how to do certain things. And I'm gonna go over all that with you. But what I ended up buying is I bought this tool from Granberg. It's a sharpening jig. Okay, it's right here. Give me a second and I'll show you the advertisements off Amazon. Okay, so I got the Granberg and I read through the reviews and stuff. Even after I got it, I went back and I read through lots of comments and reviews on this. And some of the criticisms I don't think are good. Um, I think it's because you didn't try using it because they said, well, it's too complicated. I don't like the little knobs and it's too much of a pain to get it adjusted correctly. After you use this a couple of times, once or twice, and I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step what I do, it's easy to use. And you'll put a factory sharpened tooth back on each one of the areas on this blade, I mean, without a problem, if you just follow some simple steps. And I'll go over those with you. But you gotta start off with a basic understanding of the chainsaw blade itself. So I'm going to switch inside and I'll go back and forth here from outside showing you what I do to inside and explaining it in more detail with some exploded drawings. So the first step is let's take a look. Let's name a few parts so that you understand what we're doing going forward. And I'll be back with you. I'll see you inside. Okay, so in the first picture here, what I wanted to show you is so that we can name the parts. It's not that complicated. It's very simple. This is a chainsaw blade. I'm showing you where the cutting tooth is and that it's at an angle, usually 30, 35 degrees, something in there. And I'll show you how to set that up on the gauge in a little bit. The gullet is the curve part you see right here. And over to the right, they call it a depth gauge, or you'll hear it referred to as a raker. And this is an Oregon uh, chainsaw blade here. And you can see where the rivets are. Now the rivets become important because on the one I'm going to show you that I sharpen outside, it is a smaller kind of, chainsaw blade let's say and I had to actually position it a little bit more than halfway up the rivets now usually when I clamp it I clamp it above the rivets and I'll go over this again with you but the main point in this is just to show you here are the three parts that you kind of have to know as I go through the explanation of how I do it okay so you'll see I have three different chainsaws here I have the Ryobi I have the Makita and I have the still and each one works in a different way for me. I mean, this, when I have no power, the still or the Ryobi work great. The Ryobi has a battery pack. It works fantastic. This is a gas oil mix. The other one is corded. That's the Makita. So I have like a little assortment here and I use them at different times in different ways, of course. Okay. But they all require sharpening of those chainsaw blades. So one of the first things that you need to know is, well, what chainsaw blade is on there? That will tell you what file that you need. So the Granberg does not come with a file. You're going to have to buy all the files separately. And I'll show you an Amazon ad right now that where you can get different files and they're, they're cheap. They don't cost that much. I'm going to show you inside a close-up view of this, but these screws, these flathead screws. If you loosen them up, you can adjust this and you want to put the file in so that it stretches from one end of the file to the other. When you first get this, the handle piece is like up here. Okay, so you want to loosen that and bring it back to the length of your file. So that way you got the whole filing surface to use when you're filing. Okay, so I put my chainsaw in a vise, you can see here. And what I like to do is I like to tighten up real tight the chain itself. And you have an adjustment on the saw for that. So you make this kind of tight. Now on this one, I usually will put this clamp. It's got a curve here. I usually put it just on the top part of these rivets. 
but this is an old blade it's still good so I'm going to use it for the demonstration so I put it a little more than halfway up like on these rivets you see where these rivets are here I put it a little bit more than halfway up on there and I secure this by turning the black screws and then on the back side there's another bigger screw you just tighten it down tighten it down and that tightens it in the back to the actual blade you got it set here in the front so it's not going to go anywhere then we take a look at the adjustments for a sec let me move this up out of the way you're going to see here this bent piece of steel it's coming into the back side of this blade now the other thing i'll do is i'll turn around and i'll hold with a glove on the chainsaw right here i'll hold the chain and give it a little bit of force in a backward motion so this plate is locked in here on this tooth so it's not going to move on you when you do the filing now i set it in here and remember this is the gullet i set it in here and this knob back here will take and adjust this file up or down inside of that gullet. Now you don't want it on the bottom. I mean, and generally what I do is I'll have, it might be hard to see, but I have about a quarter of the file that sticks up above the tooth. So the bottom of the file is not like in the gullet, you know, hitting the bottom. So it's up off of the bottom and I'm still above the tooth a little bit. Now this right here this adjustment in here what this is for this is going to allow you a different angle and i don't mess with that i leave that alone i don't have any reason to sharpen my blades any other way i'm just homeowner diyer now the next one is up here with a wing nut right under it and you're going to set the degrees of how you want to do your filing So in this case, let's say it's the 30 degrees. I can match it up. If you got a new blade and you match it up with the tooth, I mean, that's the easy way to do it. This blade is pretty old, pretty worn. Doesn't have a lot of life left in it, but it still cuts. So for this, I've got it set, like I said, just a little above. It's not touching the bottom. And when you file, you're going to file in forward strokes. One. Two, three, four, and you can do five or whatever. I'm just showing you this for demonstration reasons. So that's all there is to this. Once you have this set up the first time, the adjustments that are left for you to mess with are very minimal. Okay, so one more time. We have the little curved clamps, and generally I'm above these rivets on a new blade on the other chainsaws. On this one I can't do that because then it wouldn't sharpen correctly. So I'm about halfway or so on the rivets. And then I want to make sure this little piece of metal here, which is going to stop the chain from moving, is put just behind the tooth. I've got a glove on, got my hand over this blade and I'm holding it. I bring this down. I have my degree set to 30. And then the only thing you got to do is go up or down here. These are your only two controls you need to worry about once you have this thing clamped on like it should. Then you do your strokes. You can lift it up. Move it on down until you get to the next tooth. Again, holding pressure on the chain. I go one, two, three, four, five and i'm saying five for the heck of it it may only be three strokes that you need it might be six or seven depends on how messed up the blade is these are your only two controls that you really need and this is what i found that works great for me now what i'll do when i first start sharpening the chainsaw is i'll mark this tooth bright yellow or something like that or create a mark that way when i'm done going around this whole thing and I know that I have to flip this around now to get the other tooth. All you simply do is loosen this nut, okay? Flip this over, rotate this to that 30 degrees, like that. 
and you're good to go again and then just you know you tighten this up but then you're ready to do this but you got to be on that side and remember your filing motion is pushing forward you're not sawing back and forth so you'll have to spin this around in the vise but then you just go like this and you use the same tooth and go all the way around it and once you get back to that point where you marked it in yellow or whatever to make it stand out you know that you've completed sharpening each tooth on this chainsaw both sides all the way around that's the easiest way so it's easy if you just flip it like i said and if this was this tooth right here i see my mark is right up here at the 30 degrees thereabouts so you can mark it with a marker then you flip this up like this when you want to go around to the other side there's arrows here and you line it up the same way and that will give you that angle each time perfectly that's the way I do it it works for me okay now the last step in this is you want to make sure that the raker is not sitting higher than the tooth so here's the raker right here and this has to be a little bit lower than the tooth if the raker was higher it wouldn't cut anything really if it's too low the cut can be too aggressive it could actually hurt the saw or you know it could be more dangerous so you want the raker down just a little bit you know from this tooth now they make what they call a raker gauge which it costs next to nothing i'll show you the link right now okay so what i went to go get the raker gauge i realized it's not where i thought it was it's either gotten lost or misplaced but i need to make sure that that raker is down until i get my replacement gauge so you can use a flat file or you can just use a piece of steel which is what i have right here flat steel right there and what you want to do is just set it from tooth to tooth like this and bend down and take a look and make sure that that raker right here is not touching the piece of steel that it actually sits a little bit lower and in this case it's probably about a sixteenth or so just at a guess but the raker is lower than the teeth so i know that it's okay and you can go along and you can check them all real quickly and just make sure that you have a gap between the raker and the tooth and now let's see if I can uh, tilt this a little bit and give you an idea. And you can see if it focuses well enough, you can see where it actually is a little bit lower and it's not touching the piece of steel. And this will work, I mean, as kind of like a thumbnail sketch way of doing it until you get that raker gauge. But then I just go around, you can do this real quickly and check, you know, all of your teeth. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to wrap this up. I mean, to me, this Grandberg is working out real well. It's the closest thing I've run across that gives me that factory cutting edge on these chainsaw blades. I'm not an expert at it, like I said, DIY, home use, and uh, just, you know, having fun. But this is an inexpensive tool. The files are inexpensive. The raker gauge is real cheap, so... You know for a few bucks i mean you got yourself a nice little chain sharpening kit all right folks that's all i've got for this video all the links will be in the description below again i'm the home handyman i hope you click subscribe i hope you give me a thumbs up keep following me but if you want something that'll really help you out and it's not that costly to give you that factory sharp edge on chainsaw blades this is a very handy tool to have like i said use it once and then you'll get the idea there's just a couple of adjustments that you need to make from that point on. It's fast. It's easy to use. So I hope you click subscribe, like I said. And I'll see you on the next video. You folks have a great day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.